Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. So today we are going to discuss number six lecture of the aerodynamic series. So essentially we saw in the last class that when the angle of attack is fixed, when we have a fixed airfoil shape, then the lift is given by this functional relationship. So lift is L and the function involves V infinity, which is the velocity far out in the free stream, the density, the area of cross section of the surface you are dealing with, the viscosity of air, and the speed of sound in air. So this is the functional relationship which we are trying to seek. Now, like I mentioned, this function could be obtained by an extensive study of wind tunnel data for airfoils, and that would be something which we could do. But before anybody does that, what can be done is we can look at simple dimensional analysis. And that way, what we do is we write this equation out. We assume a relationship such that V is to the power A, rho is to the power B, S is to the power D, A is to the power E, mu is to the power F. And we try to equate the dimensions on both sides of this equation. So essentially what happens in dimensional analysis is that we take an equation like this and then we substitute for all the different values. So again, remember that we have values such as lift. So lift is essentially a force. So force is given by this unit here. Similarly, we have velocity that is L by T. We have density and so on. So here again, M refers to mass, L refers to length, and T refers to time. So just as an example, let's think about velocity. Velocity unit would be meter per second. So that's length by time. Now lift would be Newton, which would be kg meter per second square. So it is kg here mass meter per second square. Similarly, density would be kg per meter cube. So we have kg per meter cube. The area of cross section would be A, which would be, say, L square. So for example, if you have a rectangular section, it would be meter square. So it's length square. Similarly, A is another velocity. It is the speed of sound. So it is meter per second. And finally, we have the unit for viscosity, which is again mass by LT. So if we take all these values and we substitute on both sides of the equation and then match the coefficient, we are going to be able to reduce the number of coefficients. So what's going to happen is that E and F are going to remain and the remaining coefficients that is A, B and D are going to be functions of those coefficients E and F. So I can essentially write this equation after equating dimensions. So now the next thing which we do is we do some rearrangement and essentially that's done here. And through this rearrangement, we can bring in these two quantities here and the E and F are essentially now to the powers of these quantities. And if you observe course closely, we can see that this value is essentially a reciprocal of the Mach number. This value is essentially a reciprocal of the Reynolds number. So then I can write this L as Z rho V square S C L. Okay. So this is the value of C L which we have defined here. So C L is essentially defined in this manner. So this new quantity is known as the lift coefficient that is C L is known as the lift coefficient. And we can clearly see that C L could be calculated using this kind of relationship. Now what we do is we can write L is half rho v square SCL. So this is the equation you are going to very frequently see as far as aerodynamics is concerned. And again, realizing that half rho v square is nothing but the dynamic pressure, I can write L as Q infinity S into CL. So it is dynamic pressure into the area of the section you have. If it's a rotor blade, it is the area of the blade. If it's a wing, it's the area of the wing. And then we have the lift coefficient. So if you are asked a question, how would you determine the lift coefficient? You could say that you could calculate the lift and you could divide it by 
q infinity s and that would give us the lift coefficient value. So we see that lift is directly proportional to the dynamic pressure and hence to the square of the velocity and to the blade area and the lift coefficient. So that's essentially the basic way to define lift. Now, similar to the lift coefficient, we also can calculate the drag coefficient and the moment coefficient, and these are defined as follows. So CL is L by Q infinity S, CD is D by Q infinity S, and CM is M by Q infinity SC. So this C here comes in because, of course, we are dealing with the moment here. So if we want to non-dimensionalize the moment, we bring in the value C here. And for a given airfoil section, we can get CL is a function of alpha M Reynold number, CD is another function of alpha M Reynold number, and CM is another function of alpha M and Reynold number. So always remember that many people think that these are just function of alpha, but they are actually function of alpha M and the Reynold number. Okay. Now, the entire physics of the flow field is captured in this lift, drag, and moment coefficients, which are typically determined from wind tunnel tests. And this is a major simplification for aerodynamic and engineering applications. And the lift coefficient is a function not only of the alpha value, but also of the Reynold number and the Mach number. Now, We'll see that Reynold number and Mach number are very important as far as aerodynamics is concerned, and these are known as similarity parameters. And essentially, if these parameters are the same for two different flow conditions, for example, in a wind tunnel and in an actual flight or an actual system, then the lift, drag, and pitching moment coefficients will also be the same in these two conditions, for example, in the wind tunnel and the actual system. So therefore, what we can do is we can do tests in the wind tunnel and extrapolate them to actual real life situations in flight. And this concept of dynamic similarity is fundamental to wind tunnel testing. Now let's take a closer look at the aerodynamic coefficients which are CL, CD and CM. So Essentially, one of the goals of aerodynamics is to predict these coefficients from basic equations and physical science. Now, to do this, various simplifying approximations can be made to make the mathematics more tractable. There is also the possibility of using computation fluid dynamics where you essentially solve the flow equations directly, so Euler equations, Navier-Stokes equations, and so on. Now, there are a lot of complexities in terms of using CFD for many complicated flow situations, so it can become difficult to use there. But do remember that CFD is becoming more and more ubiquitous as far as many flow situations are concerned. So not only the aerospace companies, but also many car companies are using CFD for the design purposes. So as of yet, as far as applied aerodynamics work is concerned, still you need to do experimental measurements and go to the wind tunnel at the end of the study so that you get the coefficients for the bodies of interest. And this is also important for any kind of new flight vehicle you are designing. So it may be a micro air vehicle, it may be a drone, it may be an air taxi concept or anything like that. But essentially at the end of the day, you need to figure out what's the lift, what's the drag on this vehicle. And though you may be able to predict a lot of things using computational fluid dynamics, you may still need to do some experiments to verify those results and to get things cleared from certification perspective. So let's look at the first coefficient, which is CL. So here you see the CL value with respect to alpha. So the CL curve looks somewhat like this for a cambered airfoil. And you can clearly see that there is a straight line here. So this is a linear relationship until the phenomena called stall takes place. And stall happens due to flow separation. And after this, the lift comes down. Now this value, which is the slope, that is dCl by d alpha, this is the slope of this line. So this is a factor which plays a very important role in many aerodynamics equations and so on. This angle where the stalling takes place, this is essentially the angle for maximum Cl. And so this value where Cl reaches a maximum, this is also known as the Cl max, and it typically happens at alpha stall. Alpha stall may be 12 degree to 15 degree number like that, okay? 
Now that of course depends on the airfoil section. Different airfoil sections have different stall values. So essentially in the linear region, I could write a equation like CL is C0 plus C1 alpha, which would essentially define this curve here. And C0 would be this value here. So essentially what would happen is if we put alpha is equal to zero, then CL would be C0, which is this value here. So that's something to keep in mind. That's the value which we sometimes get in many situations. And we will, of course, get that value for cambered airfoils. Now, if you have a symmetric airfoil, this line is going to go through the origin. So in that case, C0 is going to become zero. So again, if you are presented with a line which goes through alpha zero CL zero, then you know it's a symmetric airfoil. Now let's look at the drag coefficient. So essentially this is a typical drag coefficient. It remains at some low value here and then it suddenly starts going up after stall. So essentially here stall has happened due to flow separation and this has started going up. Like I mentioned before, this value is something like 12 to 15 degrees for most airfoils and this is the angle where maximum CL happens. So this is the angle at which stalling is taking place. Now, very often this equation is used to represent CD. So CD is D0 plus D1 alpha plus D2 alpha square. So it's in this region, it's uh, typically used here. Now, the interesting thing here is that as far as CD is concerned, you would, uh, of course, always expect it to be positive here it's never possible for cd to become zero because drag is not going to be zero because of skin friction effect so keep that in mind now let's look at the third graph and that is the pitching moment coefficient so again if we have a cambered airfoil the pitching moment co coefficient is going to look somewhat like this and we can write it in this manner f0 plus f1 alpha in this region here Again, there is a stall due to flow separation and the pitching moment goes down like this. So typically the pitching moment has a somewhat negative value for a cambered airfoil. And again, the stall takes place here. Now, if you have a symmetric airfoil section, F0 would be zero. So this would be, this line would be here and then it would go down here. Now in certain flight vehicles, for example, helicopter rotors, uh, typically often the symmetric airfoil section is used because you do not want pitching moment to be there and so on. So they can always lead to loads which act on the airfoil section. So always remember that the CL, CD, and especially CM are very important in terms of load. CM can generate large torsional loads on the airfoil section, and CL and CD create bending loads which are acting on the wings or the rotor blades concerned. So that was the video today as far as the aerodynamics is concerned in terms of lift, drag, and pitching moment. So these are very important parameters, the coefficients for lift, drag, and pitching moment, and you can calculate them using computational fluid dynamics. You can calculate them from wind tunnel. And for any airfoil section, data is actually out there. People have done experiments, and so they have good data out there which you can use to calculate these coefficients. Now remember, though I plotted these coefficients with respect to alpha, they would also be different at different Mach numbers and Reynolds numbers. So very often in real systems, you would probably go to a table of CL, which is a function of alpha, RE, and M, and you could pick out the appropriate value depending on the flow condition and the angle you are dealing with. So many of these things are possible in real code, which you write in terms of calculating the lift, drag, and pitching moment, and finally the forces which are acting on the wing section. So I will end this lecture here, and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.